This is a huge tornado about to enter right into Little Rock, Arkansas, a major city with over half a million people. The tornado went on to destroy hundreds of homes at EF3 intensity, and the city was extremely lucky the tornado wasn't stronger. Unfortunately though, some cities aren't as lucky as the people in Little Rock were that day. And while extremely rare, the results of mixing strong tornadoes with huge cities is terrifying. Like for instance, 1953 Waco, Texas F5 tornado. Just after 4.30 p.m. on May 11th, a large thunderstorm began to move over the downtown area, prompting people walking in the streets to rush into various high-rise buildings to shelter from the rain. Few people anticipated a tornado, mainly due to the heavy rain squandering any chance of sighting a tornado, but also in part due to a local Native American legend that rumored no tornadoes could hit Waco due to the city being located in a geological depression. Without appropriate measures being taken, the resulting events were catastrophic. Inside the six-story R.T. Denison Co. building, dozens of people sheltered as the entire building crashed down on them. Of the 30 people killed, 22 were employees at the company. Some of the employees sought shelter in the basement, but subsequently drowned after the basement flooded under the five-foot pile of debris. Across the street, the four-story Old Tom Padgett building also suffered complete collapse. As debris rained down on the street, five people were killed trying to escape in their cars. Fortunately, newer structures such as the 22-story steel reinforced Amy Cable office building and the Dr. Pepper bottling plant both avoided collapse, albeit still suffering a fair amount of damage. To this day, the damage and inflicted upon the bottling plant can still be seen as different colored bricks. In all, 114 people were killed as a result of this tornado, giving it the title of the deadliest tornado in Texas's history. But not all tornadoes that strike downtown areas are as deadly as this. In fact, the 1997 Miami tornado killed nobody. But don't be fooled, because the weaker nature of this tornado meant damage was minimal, but for what this tornado lacked in power, it made up for purely in these incredible visuals. On May 12th, just after 1.50 p.m., a funnel cloud descended into the skyline of Miami. The first damage occurred in Silver Bluff Estates, just southwest of downtown. The tornado moved northeast towards downtown, smashing in the windows and ripping off roofing from several houses and an apartment complex in the Little Havana region. But it wasn't long until the funnel began to impact skyscrapers. According to the National Weather Service, nearly every south-facing window on the first three floors of the Citadel building on Northwest 4th Street was smashed in as the tornado struck. The tornado continued onwards, sweeping through the WTVJ NBC and Bell South office building parking lots, overturning several cars. A Metro mover car was derailed from the elevated rail system as a tornado nearly avoided the Casilla Center and Freedom Tower before moving on to open water. But it wasn't long until the tornado struck the MacArthur Causeway, cutting power to 21,000 people. The tornado then sideswiped the cruise ship MS Sovereign of the Seas before inflicting minor damage to Miami Beach and then dissipating. Scenes of this tornado as it moved through the city. There are reports of downed trees and traffic signs. Windows were blown out and there is roof damage. Fortunately, only minor injuries. The tornado touched down on the MacArthur Causeway, bringing traffic to a stop. It eventually moved out over the water and disappeared. Although the F1 tornado was on the ground for 15 minutes, the tornado caused over $1 million in damage. Large tornadoes, such as this one occurring in Florida, are pretty rare, but a tornado of this size in Utah is almost unheard of. So perhaps the most baffling tornado to ever strike a downtown area is the 1999 Salt Lake F2 tornado. The state of Utah is mostly unfamiliar to tornadoes due to its dry climate and mountainous terrain. Yet on August 11th, a rare set of conditions appeared over the city. An area of converging winds or winds coming together formed over the Salt Lake Valley just as thunderstorms began to form. At 12.40 p.m., residents in downtown looked straight up at a rapidly forming cloud of dust and debris as the tornado made a beeline straight for downtown Salt Lake City. The tornado quickly struck the Delta Center, where outside several large tents had been set up for the outdoor retailers convention. Those who were in attendance were at the complete mercy of the tornado's winds, as the tents were shredded apart by debris. Inside the tents, 81 people suffered injuries, and Alan Crandy, 38 years old, was tragically struck in the head by debris, unfortunately killing him. Across the road, 
The 14-story Wyndham Hotel had its western face pelted with debris, smashing in dozens of windows before toppling a crane located at the LDS Church's new assembly hall. The tornado continued northeast towards the LDS, smashing houses into pieces and tumbling cars. The tornado was on a direct path for the center of downtown and the hospital, but just at the last moment, the tornado wobbled northwards, barely avoiding the main skyline and hospital. After laying waste to the northeastern suburbs of the city, the tornado quickly weakened and dissipated, leaving 300 homes damaged or destroyed, and a total of $330 million in damage. But even such a rare weather event, such as this, may be beaten by the unbelievable sequence of events that have occurred in Nashville, Tennessee. First, starting at 3.40 p.m. on April 16th, 1998, an F3 tornado swept into downtown Nashville, killing one person. As the tornado approached, News Channel 5 anchor Chris Clark updated residents by writing on a whiteboard after the tornado knocked out the station's audio feed. Several skyscrapers, such as the Tennessee Performance Arts Center, the Tennessee Towers, and the nation's bank office towers were struck and damaged. In the downtown area alone, 35 buildings were deemed structurally unsound. East of downtown, up to 300 homes received major damage, whilst the local electricity grid failed, cutting power to 75,000 people. At the time, the tornado was noted for being the first F3 plus tornado to strike a downtown area in 20 years. But little did anyone know, another destructive tornado would strike Nashville itself just over 20 years later. Just after midnight on March 3rd, 2020, an EF3 tornado would barrel down nearly the exact same track towards downtown Nashville. This tornado was kind of weird as no one predicted it to be as bad as it was. In fact, it was only in a 2% tornado risk for that day, an incredible underestimate for the damage it would do. The tornado quickly intensified as it impacted the John C. Toon Airport, tossing planes and shredding hangars. Fortunately, the tornado drifted just about a half mile north of downtown, but it continued destroying the neighborhood of Germantown. Further to the east, the tornado continued to intensify, destroying some of the same neighborhoods impacted by the 1998 F3. Sadly, five people would lose their lives. And even worse, Mother Nature had one final act of cruelty left for Nashville, when during the evening of December 9th, 2023, the city was once again struck by a tornado. Mercifully, the tornado avoided downtown well to the north, but still inflicted significant damage to the northern suburbs. And as the tornado swept through the Madison neighborhood, something very unexpected occurred. Just as the tornado approached US 31 East, an electrical substation found itself being torn apart by the winds. An oil reservoir located on site ignited, triggering a huge explosion that was seen from across the Nashville metro area. Although the explosion temporarily disrupted the tornado's condensation funnel, the circulation persisted, allowing it to plow onwards into Hendersonville, Gallatin, and Castalian Springs. By the time the tornado dissipated, three people had been killed. This string of events goes to show how false the myth that tornadoes don't occur in cities actually is. And as a city gets larger, the chance that a tornado can strike it only increases in frequency. One area that is no stranger to tornadoes, and perhaps worse than the Nashville area, is the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex. Throughout the years, Dallas and Fort Worth have seen their fair share of tornadoes, and unfortunately destruction. 1957, 1969, 1995, 2019, the list is seemingly endless, but one event stands out, partly due to the destruction, but also due to the footage, the event being the March 28th, 2000 Fort Worth F3 tornado. In the early afternoon, a cluster of thunderstorms began to mature west of the Metroplex, prompting officials to issue a severe thunderstorm warning for the Fort Worth area. By 6 p.m., radar indicated that rotation within the storm was increasing, leading to sirens being activated in the city. It was less than 20 minutes later that the tornado touched down northwest of downtown. The tornado took a path due east, placing the skyline of Fort Worth squarely in its path. Relatively weak damage was inflicted to neighborhoods west of downtown, but the tornado was rapidly gaining strength. And as the tornado entered the Fort Worth business district, officials decided to issue a rare tornado emergency for downtown Fort Worth. At 6.25 p.m., the tornado began to impact skyscrapers. The Cash America building had all windows blown out on two of its faces, allowing the winds to enter the building and destroy several of the walls and ceilings. The tornado continued to gain power as it wrecked the Malik Tower and the Bank One Tower. 80% of the building's 3,000 windows were blown out as furniture and desks 
were blown away onto the streets. After the tornado exited downtown, the tornado quickly dissipated, leaving behind an incredible scene of damage. For months after the tornado, the skyscrapers in downtown sat with boarded up windows and damaged interiors. The Bank One Tower began to decay as mold grew inside, prompting officials to consider demolishing the building. In the end, the decision was made to not demolish it due to the risk of asbestos pollution in the downtown area. Fortunately, all high-rise buildings damaged by the tornado were eventually renovated, allowing downtown Fort Worth to make a full recovery. But remember that 2019 tornado mentioned? Well, it was actually of similar intensity and had a very similar path. The only difference was that it touched down at night. A nighttime tornado in a city like Dallas is incredibly dangerous, but even more than just the danger is the extreme impact it can cause. The tornado, which mainly went through neighborhoods, was still able to rank over $2 billion in damage, and the scar of the tornado is still seen today in satellite images. Now, while all of these previous tornadoes were incredible to hear about, the thing they all lack is truly violent power. Aside from the Waco F5, only one other tornado has had enough strength to change the skyline of modern U.S. city altogether. The tornado in question is the May 11th, 1970 Lubbock F5. The day itself was nothing out of the ordinary, but as the sun began to set, giant thunderstorms began to explode upwards into the sky. Several small tornadoes occurred as the sun set, but it wasn't until after dark that the main event began. At 9.35 p.m., the F5 tornado touched down just outside of town. Rudimentary radar detected the forming tornado, which was then corroborated by eyewitness reports, leading Lubbock authorities to activate the town's tornado sirens. However, by 9.49 p.m., tornado had already knocked down the power lines that allowed for the sirens to be activated, preventing them from sounding. Police cruisers raced out into the suburbs in an attempt to manually alert those in the path of the tornado, whilst KFYO radio announcer Bud Andrews warned listeners to take shelter right until the radio was also cut due to the destruction of the town's communication systems. Without updates on the tornado, many people remained oblivious to the rapidly approaching threat, and as the power went out in the city, the carnage began. Stretching from 19th Street all the way into downtown, the devastation was catastrophic. In the 1.5 mile wide, eight mile long swath of damage, 8,800 homes, 450 apartments, 250 businesses, 10,000 motor vehicles, a dozen schools, and 26 lives were gone. Jay Harris observed the tornado strike downtown, describing how he saw the massive funnel squatting low on the land as it approached and struck. He said, from the moment that awful roar and the sound of 10,000 fists sending their savage might smashing into skyscraper and slum alike struck terror across the city, it was a city at the mercy of these elements. It seemed as though it would never end. On and on and on, the exploding walls and glass, crashing trees, poles and tumbling cars, and the dead and dying and the injured. Then, the almost sudden, deathly pause and quiet. And then it was another world, a nightmare come true. In downtown, the 20-story Great Plains Life Building had its frame twisted anti-clockwise as the tornado roared past, disabling three of the four elevators and severely cracking the stairwells and warping the steel frame by 12 inches. John Zan had been hosting a nighttime personal achievement class on the top floor of the building when the tornado struck, with the group making a desperate escape down the stairwell in the dark as the entire building shook. By some incredible miracle, everyone escaped unharmed. The pressure that had been exerted on the building led to several of the building's ceilings being lifted and cracked, causing enough internal damage to close the building for five years. Nearby, the 15-story First National Bank Pioneer Natural Gas Building had its entire southern face smashed in by the intense winds, allowing them to enter the building's interior and damage the ceilings. Damage to the northwestern portion of downtown was so great, the entire area had to be demolished and redeveloped. After tearing through the downtown area, the tornado laid waste to the Lubbock Municipal Airport, destroying 100 private aircraft and 19 other military aircraft. After the tornado finally lifted, an estimated $1.3 billion in damage had been done, making this potential the worst tornado to ever hit a city. Thanks for watching and be sure to subscribe. And shout out to my channel members. If you would like to suggest a video and see exclusive content, make sure to become a member down below.